Hernan Cortes de Monroy Y. Pizarro Altamirano, who referred to himself as Hernando, was born in the town of Medellin, modern-day Spain, in 1485 to a family of lesser nobility. His father's name was Martin Cortes de Monroy and his mother was Catalina Pizarro Altamirano. Cortes studied Latin under his uncle in Salamanca at the age of 14 and returned home to Medellin after two years. However, this upset his father as they wanted him to learn more topics so he could get a profitable legal career. Cortes, however, acquired knowledge of the legal codes of Castile, a town he was born in, through his trainings as a notary in both Valladolid and Hispaniola. He used this knowledge to apply for the justification of his authorized conquest of Mexico. According to Gomara, Cortes was ruthless, mischievous, and haunty around the spirit. As a 16-year-old who returned to a home in a small provincial town, he felt constrained. Cortes then prepared to sail to the Americas when Nicolas de Ovando, his distant relative who had been appointed as governor of Hispaniola, but an injury prevented him traveling until 1504 where he left for Hispaniola and there he became a colonist. Cortes, who was now 15 years, arrived at Santa Domingo, Hispaniola capital, and registered as a citizen that allowed him to own a land for farming and building. Ovando also granted Cortes an encomienda, appointing him as a notary of Azua de Compostela. Cortes spent the next five years establishing himself in the colony and became a part of the conquest of the Hispaniola and Cuba in 1506, which earned him a large estate of land and Indian slaves as a reward of his efforts. Diego Velazquez de Coela, who was governor of New Spain, chose Cortes to be his aide and made Cortes clerk to the treasury at the age of 26. Cortes was saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that the crown got the specified one-fifth of profits from every expedition. His dedication pleased Diego that the governor gave him a high political position in the colony. He became Diego's secretary and was twice appointed the municipal magistrate of Santiago. Cortes became a respectable man of caliber with a large number of Indian slaves to work at his mines and cattle. But the relationship between Governor Diego and Cortes began to wane by an expedition that Diego did not want Cortes on. It further strained when Cortes got into a romantic relationship with a sister-in-law of Diego, Catalina Zuarex. Diego was partly displeased because he believed that Cortes was only playing with Catalina's affections, which was not wrong. After all, Cortes, for a time, preferred one of Catalina's sisters. However, he did get married to Catalina after being pressured by Diego. Cortes gave in to the pressure, hoping that it would earn him a place of favor with Catalina's family and also before Diego. Diego set Cortes on an expedition in 1518 to explore and conquer the land of Mexico to be colonized. But at the point of departure, Diego changed his mind, revoking the charter given to Cortes. But Cortes' desire was not so easily deterred, so he mutinied, and in 1519, he set course. Cortes claimed for the Spanish crown the land of Yucatan Peninsula in the Mayan territory and then went on to Tobasco, but was resisted by the natives. However, the battle was won by Cortes and his men against the natives, capturing most of them, including 20 young indigenous women. Cortes also converted them to Christianity and took one of the captives, La Malinche, as his mistress, who also bore him his first illegitimate son, Martin. Cortes and his men cut off the Aztec city's supplies and held siege of Tenochtitlan, which ended with the destruction of the city and a victory for Cortes. The Aztec Empire in whole was captured in 1521, with Cortes claiming the empire for Spain and renamed it Mexico City, becoming its governor. There have been several historical sources that portrayed Cortes as an unjustly treated person by the Spanish crown, who was given nothing as gratitude for establishing New Mexico. But this was only deducted from Cortes' letters, which do not paint the whole picture as he held his own sense of entitlement and his vanity may have contributed to his deteriorated position with the king. Cortes was appointed governor, chief justice, and captain general of the conquered New Spain territory by King Charles, but four more royal officials were appointed alongside Cortes. 
Much to his dismay, they were to assist him in governing the new land with close observation and administration. Despite Cortes's flouting Diego's authority in sailing to the mainland and the expedition of conquest, Cortes got an honor of the coat of arms, a mark of a high honor from Diego, as a reward for his success. At this point, Cortes found his marriage to Catalina became of no meaning to him as it did not raise his status since she did not hold the noble title of Dona and since their marriage had produced no children, Cortes had children from other women. In November of 1522, Catalina died in mysterious circumstances. Cortes was accused of murdering his wife leading to a huge scandal and investigation. This had little or no effect on Cortes. However, for all that concerned him was that he was free to marry someone he considered of higher status who measured up to his wealth and power. Cotes headed the Honduras expedition from 1524 to 1526, defeating Cristobal de Olid, who under Diego had claimed Honduras as his own. But few days after his return from the expedition, Cotes was suspended from his position as governor of New Spain. Cotes then appealed to Charles V, who accepted Cotes' appeal granting him entrance and decorated him with the Order of Santiago. Cotes went on to discover the Baja California Peninsula, which was his last major expedition. Cotes went on to discover the Baja California Peninsula, which was his last major expedition. Nonetheless, he was designated the title of Don and Marquis of the Valley of Osaka in 1529 and had his second marriage to Dona Joana de Zunga, a Spanish noblewoman with whom he had three children. However, Cotes went into debt, owing lots of people, having spent a lot of his finances on expedition. He made a claim to the royal treasury but was ignored for three years. In disgust for the manner he was treated, Cotes left for Mexico in 1547 but became ill with dysentery at Seville. On December 2, 1547, Cotes died of pleurisy in Castelleja de la Cuesta in the province of Seville at 62 years. Cortes's body was buried in the Duke of Medina's mausoleum at the church of San Isidoro del Campo, Sevilla. His body was moved through different burial places more than eight times and he was commemorated with the naming of a subspecies Mexican lizard, Phrenosoma orbicula cortesi. As a Spanish explorer, Hernan Cortes began the beginning and first phase of Spanish colonization of the Americas. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.